Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing yet another recommendations video for Springathon, the nature writing uh, readathon that I'm co-hosting the first two weeks of May. So I already released one that talked about the first four prompts for the readathon which I will link down below and also do check out all of last year's content which I totally do still stand by but this year I wanted to try and recommend things that I've only I've read like in the past 12 months so since the last Springathon so I won't have recommended them in any of last year's content and today we're going to be talking about like I said the final four prompts. If you've no idea what I'm on about with Springathon, announcement is linked down below in the cards. All that jazz everywhere, it's just going to be all over the screen. So let's jump in and let's talk about the four final prompts. The first one of these is Forage of the Forage slash Hibernate combo and for my non-fiction prompt, uh, non-fiction offering even, is Europe. The First 100 Million Years by Tim Flannery. Of course it wouldn't be one of my recommendations videos if there wasn't a ton of natural history in here and I'm tapping into the fact that paleontologists often have to forage for fossils to get evidence of life from years gone by. Yeah that counts, it's fine, shut up. Uh, so this is looking at Europe as a continent and kind of how it formed, what life was like on it, looking at kind of some of the earlier islands when um, the sea level was much higher and the way that that impacted um, how life evolved when you get like island both dwarfism and giantism which is a really fascinating phenomenon that happens over and over again in Earth's history and is very cool and then it kind of takes you all the way up to more mod um, not modern day but like early hominid stuff. Now Tim Flannery, I'm not the biggest fan of his writing style so whilst I did really enjoy the actual content of this book and I think if you're a big fan of natural history you'll be happy to ignore his writing style but he's a little bit presumptuous in places uh, a little bit callous in places his humor definitely does not work for me and he definitely is very determined to um, explain to the reader why Europe is the best continent which seems a really bizarre thing to try and argue for because it's a continent and I don't think you can really rank them in terms of how interesting they are but if you can ignore all that which I do encourage you to try to it's actually a really cool book and covers some really amazing animals that evolved however many years ago and it's just yeah very very fascinating a really kind of classic read for natural history and for fiction I want to recommend The Familiars by Stacey Halls I think that historical fiction works really well for a lot of kind of nature writing stuff because often it is steeped in the atmosphere and it really does kind of talk about people's connections with nature and I think this this one is a particularly good example of that. The Familiars is about a woman who um, is pregnant and she wants to use kind of the the local midwife type character but it's in the yeah, 1600s there we go so the person is kind of a mix of sort of a witch medicine woman um, kind of herbal healer type person but it's right in the middle of when the kind of witch trials were really starting to take their height and it is about the interactions between this woman and the the kind of local medicine woman and also what is happening kind of around society and they both get dragged into the witch trials in general the kind of connection i'm making here is the medicine woman has to often forage from the land to find her various kind of um, tinctures and cures and things like that. I think it's a really lovely atmospheric historical fiction. It's not my favourite by far of the horror historical fiction genre but it is really connected with nature and it is a wonderful read if again you wanted something a little bit lighter in all of your non-fiction reading. The next word is hibernate and for that I have Kindred, Neanderthal, Life, Love, Death and Art by Rebecca Rag Sykes. I like to think of fossils as hibernating under the earth ready to be discovered shut up i'm gonna fit natural history in everywhere i can that's what i do on this channel um, so rebecca rags likes this is an incredible compendium of kind of everything we know up until this moment about neanderthals um sort of generally how they lived their interactions with death with art with love um sort of how they then interacted with early um, homo sapiens and how we can know things from the kind of genetic codes that they've left behind and just sort of the various different techniques that we have to be able to understand what was happening um, however many thousands of years ago. Um, really incredible, lovely writing style and definitely a great read if you don't know much about Neanderthals. It will definitely change your mind of the idea of them as being the grunting caveman. It's a little bit dense, it did take me quite a while to read it so it might not be the best pick for a two week long readathon. However, if you just want some something to read in general I think this one is absolutely fantastic there's also a really wonderful um, podcast episode of your dead to me where Rebecca actually talks about Neanderthals so if you want the more like condensed down version that's only an hour and I would totally recommend the podcast you're dead to me anyway it's fantastic it's a history podcast I love it to death um, but yeah so totally check out any of her content online she's great and for fiction I wanted to recommend the deep by rivers 
River Solomon. This is a novella and it is about um, mermaids but it's specifically about the kind of myth and folklore of the idea of the black women who were pushed overboard in the time of the slave trade who then turned into mermaids and it's the idea of kind of generational pain. Um, I'm loosely tying into the concept of like I think that a lot of them hibernate. I vaguely remember a big hibernation happening in the story or like a big kind of sleep but the idea is that the memories of all of this generational pain cannot be shared across all of the different um, people of this population, it would be too much. So instead one person holds them all together so that the others can live kind of um, in ignorance as bliss. But the person in within this kind of society who has to do that, just one year turns around and says, do you know what, no, I'm sick of being everybody's kind of vessel for their pain. And so she just decides to bounce and flees instead. Um, it's a really beautiful tale, it's absolutely incredible, I'm super hyped up last year in booktube, totally for good reason. Um, it's just yeah a beautiful really fascinating look at the idea of mermaids um, and the idea of generational pain and the idea of sort of what we hold on to um, and it has a really really sweet lesbian love romance at the end um, love romance that's not how you say words that's fine but yeah would totally recommend and it's quite a short read which means very good for a readathon the next combo of words is buzz and stillness and for buzz of course we have to pick an insect book and that would be extraordinary insects by Anne Svedrup Thigson I think I butcher that name every time. I'm really sorry, Anne. I read this for Springathon last year for The Prompt of Insect, and it is fantastic. Insects are bafflingly weird and incredible, and lots of people go, ugh, with them, which is perfectly fair, because they're also gross. But they are just, yeah, weird, wonderful, indispensable, and according to this, the ones who rule our world. There are so many different kinds of insects on our planet. I mean, if you actually, like, the, there are, I think, beetles outnumber every other species on the planet from what I've heard. Like people go into the Amazon and come back with like 72 new species of beetle every day. Um, it's just very cool, very interesting, would totally recommend it, really great read, just kind of running through the different things that kind of insects do, how they work, the different groupings, like it's a classic insect book, totally check it out. And then for, not, for fiction I was really struggling with the prompt of buzz so I am recommending a book that probably got recommended last year because I don't have anything new and I'm sorry about that but that is The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. This is now the third John Wyndham book I've recommended within Springathon. Um, I'm a big fan of his Can You Tell. This is the first book of his that I read and I think it might still be my favourite um, but the idea is that one day an entire village falls completely asleep and when they wake back up all of the women there are pregnant and then when the children are born they have this weird hive mind thing going on hence the concept of buzz i'm trying to tap into the idea of like a an ant hive mind kind of a communication shut up it counts i love it i love the way that Wyndham plays with ideas he's kind of a classic sci-fi writer of the 50s and i think he has um an incredible way of really understanding like big human behavior and how governments would probably respond to kind of challenges like this um, it also is hilariously funny in places, I don't know if it was supposed to be, but there's a scene really early on that I don't want to spoil that made me like absolutely cry with laughter. Um, so it's a really really great book and I would totally recommend it to anybody, it's it's such a good read. Wyndham is fantastic. And then for stillness I have uh, Into the Planet by Jill Hynath. This is the memoir of a cave diver, she's one of the kind of um, pioneers of kind of women cave diving. Um, she has got a bunch of Guinness Book of World Records for like the longest and the deepest and all sorts of stuff like that. She's done cave diving into an iceberg which is absolutely mind-blowing to think about but the idea of stillness is for a lot of these places where she's diving she is either the first person or one of the very few people to have ever gone there and the book really talks about kind of the stillness of underwater deep in these caves and kind of the darkness and the fact that you really can't see much. It's very technical in nature if you're looking for you know big glorious descriptions of open stunning caverns you're not going to get that kind of thing it really is more about the techie side of kind of scuba diving and cave diving and the dangers connected with it and how do you go about doing these things but she has some really incredible travels meets some really incredible people and it's just a fascinating look into a world that i knew absolutely nothing about I also listened to it an audiobook and would totally recommend that particular format. And then the final book I want to recommend for all of Springathon is uh, Silver in the Woods by Emily Tesh. This is a lovely novella and I'd actually recommend reading it with the second novella, it's a duology, but if you just like shove them together you get kind of like one full book length and that's what I did, I kind of binge both of them in a row. Uh, Silver in the Woods is based on the idea of the green man folklore and it is about a gentleman who lives in the woods of this kind of old manor house. It's kind of a, again a historical fiction and he's sort of part of the forest and represents a certain part of the forest and then one day a um 
like gentleman stumbles across his his cottage and they kind of strike up a friendship potential blossoming romance and it's just about the stillness and quiet of his um very long life being interrupted by this person kind of bursting in and really shaking things up it's beautiful filled with longing really incredible love the world building wish there was more of it wish it wasn't just a novella and really enjoy book two um does something fun and weird so yeah that is it for me um let me know what you think to all these books down below i know i'm kind of reaching with some of these prompts but that's the point to a readathon is to try and take these things and just fit them in to how you like to interact with nature writing non-fiction in general um so do let me know in the comments down below if you're going to be reading any of these books for springathon or if you have any better ideas for prompts i'm going to get going because i'm late for a family zoom have a wonderful reading week and i'll chat to you soon bye